Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television, our community connected. Thanks for watching and thanks to our producer, Jeff DeRaw. We're at the Ellis County Law Enforcement Center and we're visiting with Bill Ring, the Ellis County Emergency Management Director for the county uh, for severe weather season. And of course, with the arrival of spring now, Bill, that means a little more heads up perhaps with the arrival of tornado season. Absolutely. Where your job kind of goes up a notch or two at <laughs> least as we talk about tornado season. But Bill's been to school recently, so final exam time. What did you learn, Bill? I was in Topeka with the, uh, through the Kansas Division of Emergency Management and the Adjutant General's Office. Um, we have a group called the Safe and Prepared Schools and it was a three-day training class on helping schools be able to write plans mm -hmm. um, on school safety and, uh, and make sure we've got, you know, things in lined up for tornado season, their mm -hmm. fire drills. Um, God forbid we have to have active shooter, something like that. But mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to work some more with USD 489 and uh, 432 and 388 in Ellis, as well as the uh, parochial schools mm -hmm. to give them uh, more heads up on how to keep the kids safe. We're going to talk more about schools and safety, but I uh, wanted to direct the attention to uh, a website for home preparedness tips. A lot of things to keep in mind, maybe sometimes they slip. Uh, we've got a lot of handout uh, information that's available here at the Law Enforcement Center, also available at uh, the clerk's office and uh, the, the courthouse. courthouse. Um, and this will give us some tips, but uh, this website Ready.gov is the place to go, right, Bill? Correct. That's managed by FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. And it's kind of uh, what I consider one-stop shopping. You can get information on preparedness, on planning for your home, for your community, um, for your business. Mm -hmm. um, you can get how to make a kit, how to write a plan. You can print all this information off. Um, school safety information so you could look into, uh, you could read about what's recommended for school planning, school safety, school bus information. Just, it's a, it's a, a vast um, grouping of everything and it's all point and click and downloadable. Boy, it's a, a great thing, I think. Very comforting to me as uh, just a person who, of course, uh, observes the weather and uh, is impacted by the weather, that there's so much planning that goes into that including spotter training, which is coming up uh, in early April. Right? That's correct. It'll be April 2nd. It will be uh, Wednesday evening. It'll be hosted again um, from our friends at Sternberg Museum in Fort Hayes. They've been doing that for quite a number of years. It'll be in the lobby there. Um, I believe last year we had over 125 people attend. Uh, the Weather Service puts it on. Jeff Hutton um, has been doing it for years. He works down there. He's the uh, warning coordinator and then it, uh, you can come out. We've got one here. We'll be uh, giving away a few weather radios, NOAA weather radios, which mm -hmm. everyone should have one of those. Um, and it's free. Who can attend? Anybody. Uh, who can be a spotter? You know, as far as, you know, it's for, mm -hmm. for your own personal safety, it's good information for everybody to know mm -hmm. because you never know when you might be out. You could be on the highway. You could be out in the county somewhere mm -hmm. um, and just kind of get a basic overview of, of what clouds look like. And, um, basically, good cloud, bad cloud, you know, I mean, but um, I mean, we all know what a tornado looks like, but mm -hmm. the, the prelude to, you know, a, a tail dropping down, mm -hmm. um, it's also some other good information. Um, like I said, it, it's free. It's, we, we enjoy hosting it. People bring their children. Um, all the guys from the police department go, the fire department guys all, mm -hmm. all go again. Um, presentation takes about an hour and a half, and it's mm -hmm. updated every year. It's not the same um, presentation, so... Uh, Jeff does a great job at uh, bringing new information. Um, and he goes out and he presents this to every county that's covered through uh, Dodge National Weather Service office. So really the idea is for people to learn how to spot pre-tornado conditions and situations. It's not for becoming a professional weather Correct. spotter then. Correct, it's, it's um, more about your own personal safety. Talking about personal safety and homes, first of all, if you would, Bill, um, anything changed in the way of our approach that we should take? You know, we've always had the uh, keep alert, uh, monitor the weather situations, find a safe place for the home, have a kit ready in case there was a situation that uh, 
uh, you needed uh, water and medicines and things like that. Correct. Anything has changed uh, with your uh, uh, work over the last year? Not a lot of changing other than um, the, you know, the three key items that they've talked about and you touched on them is um, have a kit, have a plan, mm -hmm. and stay informed. Mm -hmm. And I think pe people pretty much, you know, they've gotten to the point of having some kind of a kit like we talked about, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the food, the flashlight, and extra batteries and that. Um, staying informed, um, one great way is, you know, with a weather radio, but we're also recommending to have um, redundancy, have mm -hmm. a second way. Um, it can be listening to the radio mm -hmm. um, in your home, like Eagle Radio, as an example, um, watching television, the, the media, having a phone app, because if certain things happen pre-storm, um, if the power goes out, your television doesn't work, the radio's not on, this is battery backup, that would continue to work, but your cell phone, if you get a phone app, um, Eagle has one now with Hayes Post where if there's a weather alert, it alerts, I've got your app on my phone, and um, I get an update, and it says that there's a high wind warning. What a surprise in Kansas. <laughs> but it, um, that will, cut, that will carry over for mm -hmm. tornado season. Mm -hmm. We're in a tornado watch. We're in a tornado warning. So, but having that redundancy, so if the power goes out, you may, you know, your cell phone. I mean, it's that simple. Talk about also, uh, we move from the home situation to maybe areas of concern that might be at uh, assisted living centers, things like that. You've been working pretty closely with those folks. That's correct. And, and you know, they report every year, um, you know, that they verify that they have a current plan in place um, and they follow all their state regulations. And if they have any needs or questions, you know, that we, we go out and we'll visit with them and whatnot. And, um, you know, they pretty much give us, us either an assigned shelter, assigned safe location, a safe area, um, and have, you know, some basic supplies in place, you know, so they've got some water and whatnot. And you can kind of look and make recommendations, although it's not an official recommendation, Correct. but you can make opinions, right. if right. you will. Exactly, you know, that, that, you know, make sure that they've got the, the right things in place and, you know, they're not near a window or a doorway, you know. Talk about schools for a while, if you would, Bill, and uh, where we are. Um, uh, is new construction for schools, is that now necessary to have a tornado safe area for students and staff? That's a good question, Mike. We're, and we're hoping to see that very soon. It's in the legislature right now. Uh, the state of Kansas is uh, looking into that. And from what I've read on the, the bill, it says that basically if you do more than a 50% upgrade to your facility or new construction, you would have to incorporate into the construction safe areas for your students. You know, they have to be what they call FEMA 361 approved. And right now the Hayes Middle School is undergoing some Correct. renovation, additional construction <coughs> and such. Uh, and pretty sure that should be ready. Um, I know they've been working on that for quite some time. They were able to get a federal grant um, over a million dollars to put towards building safe rooms. So hopefully we'll see that ready. <clears throat> maybe before this uh, storm season. Let's talk about uh, when you're out in the area, um, the uh, sirens, for example, um, give us an overview. Uh, all sirens working, coverage uh, <coughs> sufficient to, to cover the county now? How are right. we there? Um, in the beginning of May, it's what they call Severe Weather Awareness Week, and it's the state of Kansas in conjunction with Kansas Emergency Management, the National Weather Service, on Tuesday of that, the first week. We do a tornado siren test across the state, 1.30. Mm -hmm. um, the schools are all recommended to do one of their tornado drills, which they're required to mm -hmm. do that day. Um, and so it gives us, you know, beginning of the, you know, before tornado season actually mm -hmm. kicks in, gives us a chance to check the sirens mm -hmm. to make sure that they're all firing off. Um, quick rundown on it. The city of Hayes has completed their siren upgrade project. They did that last year. They have six brand new sirens, so they've got, um, better and louder coverage. Mm -hmm. Fort Hayes also last year finished their upgrade project um, where they, and they added a siren down mm -hmm. around the uh, Lewis Field area. Mm -hmm. So they have four that cover the campus. Um, and then the county is still has, we you know, in all the uh, smaller um, unincorporated cities, you know, Shenzhen, Pfeiffer, Munger, mm -hmm. et cetera. City of Ellis has got their seven and they're up and running. City of Victoria's got their three. Mm -hmm. 
So um, I think we're in pretty good shape. And we will continue on Mondays at noon mm -hmm. if the weather's not, you know, it doesn't look like there's storm clouds or the potential of, you know, we actually have, we're under some kind of watch. We won't test them, but always we test them at noon to make mm -hmm. sure. And then we have people that monitor those for us mm -hmm. and they'll call in if, um, you know, we have an issue. Uh, talk about what we should do when we hear the sirens if it's not the regular Monday noon test, Bill. Let me tell you what we're not supposed to do <laughs> is go outside and look. Okay. And unfortunately, and it's, it, it's, you know, I do a lot of presentations. That's one of the first questions I ask is, what are you doing? Everybody says, well, you should go to the basement. I said, how many people go outside? And, you know, quite a few hands mm -hmm. pop up. Yeah. But that's absolutely, you know, not the right thing to do. Um, you need to be you know, cognizant of what's going on. Um, that's why we recommend you don't uh, have your kid upstairs. You want your kid downstairs. If you're, you know, if you go into the basement, you've got a closet. You only, you don't have a basement or a safe area in your home. That should be close by. But um, if you're outside, and again, I, and I'll reiterate that with a tornado siren or an outdoor warning device, or not really tornado, you know, all these name changes <laughs> got to be politically correct. Um, it's designed to let people outside know they need to seek shelter. Mm -hmm. And when we say that, we need now. I mean, there's no... Um, That's worth repeating, I think, is that when you hear that siren, a tornado has been spotted. There is imminent danger in some area of coverage that these spotters have seen. Correct. And or, that means don't go outside and try to see it yourself. Right. There, or the other thing, and this, and again, this is where sometimes people get a little confused because they may they may not see it. First of all, it could be a rain wrap tornado, so you don't see those. But the Weather Service, with all their high-tech radar, they have what they call radar indicated. In other words, mm -hmm. based on what they're seeing, and they've got a lot fancier thing that we can get on our telephone, our mm -hmm. computer. Um, and so they will put out a tornado warning based on a radar indicated. Mm -hmm. So they feel the way, the, you know, what they've been following, and they monitor this very tightly, um, that there's a the potential, it's a very high potential to have a tornado. And likewise, like you said earlier, if we have a spotter mm -hmm. that calls in, one of the, you know, the Ellis County mm -hmm. spotter that will call in to dispatch on the radio and say, I've got a tornado and it's at this location, depending on direction of travel and uh, where it specifically it's at, you know, we start setting sirens off. Um, we try not to, um, we don't want to alarm people because the county is 30 miles wide. If we have a tornado, this is just a basic example, we have a tornado or possibly an indicated tornado, say in Ellis, the city of Ellis, we won't set off the siren in Walker. That's 30 miles away, especially based on the direction of travel. And if it, most tornadoes come from the southwest and tend to track northeast, but we'll wait and we'll see, because if we set it off at the same time, then People go outside and it could still be sunny in Walker and stormy in Ellis. And then you, you, know, you, want, you don't want complacency to start to take place because they go outside, well, why is he setting the sirens off that's sunny? A lot of handout information available at Ellis County Law Enforcement at the clerk's office. Uh, uh, their location's probably to come. May is the significant time for tornadoes. 80% total of 45 in the month of May and Ellis was one of four counties that tied for the number of tornadoes last That's year. That's correct. At four tornadoes. Right, we actually did, and thank goodness that they were all out in the country area, and they were all probably EF1s, so that we didn't have any major, you know, nothing, no monster storms like, say, an EF5 that took out Greensburg mm -hmm. or Joplin. But again, it, it does point out that we need to be cognizant of what is going on because we do have tornadoes. Be aware and be prepared. That's correct. Bill Ring, uh, Ellis County Emergency Management Director, gives me a chance to quickly say thanks to all of our law enforcement, emergency uh, uh, service uh, folks, uh, rural fire, and all the people who help keep us safe. We appreciate their efforts and their continuing work. Bill Ring, Ellis County Emergency Management Director, for Community Connection, thanks for watching.